Hello, and welcome to Grug Gaming. And welcome back to our Let's Play of RPG Maker MV, where we don't edit out the beginning of the recording because that would take too much work. So, last episode, we finished up the interior for Grug's house. We set it up, we set up the transition so you can move from the exterior of his house to the interior of his house. Now it's time to design our cutscene. We kind of laid out the basics for the cutscene, what's going to happen, what we're going to see initially when the game starts. So, our game is going to start here. Nope, it's going to start here, right outside of Grug's house, actually. We'll start here. And what we need to do is this, if this is where our game is going to start, this is where we need to put Grug. So we're going to go up here uh, to... I'm going to right-click on the map of the event. And I'm going to set starting position for the player. So that means Grug's going to start on this screen, as opposed to starting out here. Now I'm putting him in the corner right now, uh, because I'm going to be moving him later. He's going to act as our camera, actually. Uh, because when we move him around, it'll, of course, move the focus of the screen. So the first thing we're going to do is we need to create the people who are going to be in our cutscene. And we're going to use some of this extra space here. So we're going to make an event. Oh, actually, we need to make our villains first. So we're going to have two kidnappers we talked about. One who's going to kill the mother and one who's going to take the son. So we need to open up the character generator. And what we're extremely interested in here uh, is hitting the wrong keys on our keyboard because that's how Grug does it. We need to make some, some pretty mean looking dudes. So let's randomize a bit. Let's see if we can't get some kind of mean... Oh, that guy looks mean. That's, that'd be like a, an evil orc after Grug's, after Grug's kid. Uh, but we're going to give him a hat. Oh, that just worked out perfect. The game knew what we were trying to do. Let's give him a hat. Let's give him this, uh, oh yeah, let's give him this hat, and oh, look at that, I like it black. We don't want these sunglasses, though. I don't know, oh, those aren't sunglasses, his eyes just look weird. So, man, I don't know, do we want our villain to look like this? Do we want to change his clothing up at all? Uh, let's see, uh, raggedy clothes, kind of wizardy clothes. I mean, we have a lot of options. Uh, we're going to get rid of his cloak. I don't want him to have a cloak on. Uh, no cloak. Oh, we can give him wings? Oh, I didn't know we could have wings. We may have to work... Oh, we're going to have to have a dragon person later on in the game. That's going to happen. Oh, there's all kinds of cool options here. All right, anyways, back to his clothing. Uh, we're going to give him this. Oh, we should take those wings off. There we go. Yeah, this guy with his hat. This this guy with his hat and this, this scarf. This scarf just says, hey, I'm here to cause no good. I'm here to cause problems. Let's, uh, what changes the scarf color? Is it some color? That changes that. There we go. Um... If Grug is kind of dark, let's make the back guys red so we can see right off the bat. Red suit, red suit, black hat. Okay? So here's our villain, our main villain. So we have his regular face image. We've done this before. Uh, we're going to call this Kidnapper 1 is what we're going to call this guy. So we're going to export, and same as we did before, we're going to call him Kidnapper 1 save and then same thing we want to do some additional face uh some additional faces so a little bit of shock there we go import kidnapper one there we go export to kidnapper one yes and then we got a shocked face we've got uh, we're just going to change some of his expressions. We're not going to do a lot of time like we did on Grug, like messing around with stuff. Uh, how about a little bit of shock? That's not at all what I wanted to hit. Can I undo that with the Control-Z? Oh, no. Well, 
Gotta be careful of that, folks. Don't hit that randomize button after you've dis discovered your kidnapper. Oh, we're back on the trail. Oh, this purple dude. This guy's like Obsidian Man. Okay, this is it. This guy here with his hair. We're going to get rid of this eye patch. Only Grug can have an eye patch. We don't need two people with that. And this hair I don't like in his face. I want to see the villain. This beard is okay, but let's uh, let's get a mustachey one. There we go. He's a dark elf. Look, dark elves are always evil. That's great. We got a drow evil elf guy is going to show up. So uh, that's going to be our guy right there. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, get his clothing back to where we had it. Uh, cloak is going to be none. And clothing, I think we had him in... Was it this? No, it wasn't that. Ooh, this looks good. And we do that in a reddish color. A brighter red. Uh, I'm okay with that. Well, we subcolor the blue instead. And which one is this pinkish color? There we go. I'm okay with that look for our villain. All right, so we're going to try this again. We're going to export this. We're going to overwrite Kidnapper 1. And then on his face, for his mouth, shocked. Import Kidnapper 1. Export. Oh. Put the shocked expression export to Kidnapper 1. The beards just don't work as well with the mouth, I guess, is the thing. Um, ooh, he has this little closed mouth. Import Kidnapper 1. Nope. Again, we're just not going to put as much effort into him as we did our main character. Uh, how about this little woo look to his face? That's pretty cool. But I want to have enough expressions that, in the because when we do dialogue, I want to be able to choose different expressions for the characters when they're talking. So that's kind of what this is for. That's why we're doing so many of these different mouth types and faces. And then we need an upset, angry face uh, for that. So import, and then we'll put this here. I think that's enough for Kidnapper 1, okay? So Kidnapper 1, that looks good. Um, we're going to need Kidnapper to exist in other parts in the world. So we're going to export this. Because he's got to walk around the map. We might need to have him wounded or somewhere. So export that. And I'm naming him the same thing across the board because I don't want it to get confusing. And just in case we need his images for this, I don't think we will, but who knows. Kidnapper 1. Alright. Kidnapper 1 is done. Now we need Kidnapper 2. Uh, and again, uh, this just goes so fast to make these characters. Uh, ooh, Kidnapper 2 will have this hat. Ooh, look, this is Kidnapper 2. I don't even have to touch anything. This is Kidnapper 2 right here with a cloak. He's an evil cowboy man. We don't know how they'll talk yet, but this is good. This is good. Uh, so let's use this. So I want the, the kind of basic face right here. Export Kidnapper 2. And then same thing we did before. Let's get a smiling face. Let's get a what's going on face. Let's get a ooh face. I love that ooh look to him. Uh, I'm going to put that here.
then we kind of need an unhappy face. So that's kind of like a grimacy face. Or just that face right there. Yeah, we don't... That little face right there will work. Alright. So export this. Kidnapper 2. There we go. And of course our kidnapper again. He's going to need to walk around. So we're going to export him. Kidnapper 2. His damage model. Kidnapper 2. Uh, no. Oh, it puts it in the same character section. Well, that's upsetting. Kidnapper 1 doesn't have a walk cycle. Well, we're going to have to redo Kidnapper 1 real quick. That's okay. Export here, Kidnapper 2, walk. Damage character, export... Kidnapper to damage. Now we know. Knowing is half the battle. Export here. Kidnapper to battle. And the face image. Import. Kidnapper to export. Kidnapper to face. Well, that's upsetting. So, Kidnapper 1. Uh, we need to get him back real quick. Let's see if we can do this super quick. His face... I don't care about his face, actually, at all. Um, all I care about is he had these kind of ears. He did not have a hat. He had some front hair that was kind of like this. And he had some... The rear hair was not long. It was like the kind of bushy. There we go. And he had a big old beard. He had that right there. And I'm not too worried about his eyes. But his clothes, we decided no cloak. And we had him in something like... Here, we'll put him in this, this thing again. In a red outfit. That kind of striking red. With more red. And more red. And the hair is the wrong color. What color was his hair? It was an orange color, wasn't it? Um, that looks good enough. Okay. Uh, so this. What character? Export. Kidnapper 1 walk. Damage character. Export. Kidnapper 1 damage. And then Battler. Export. Kidnapper 1 battle. Alright. So, we've hopefully fixed this. We'll see how this looks. Uh, what did our face image look like for him? He doesn't have the scarf on. Oh man, it's that scarf is going to be a problem. What was he wearing? It had that... Ah, oh, that was the outfit right there. Okay. Export. Save. Yes. Good. That's That was an easy enough fix. Damage. Export. Save, yes, overwrite. And Battler, export, save, overwrite. Okay. So, with all that done, we've now created these two extra characters. Uh, 14 minutes in, just checking the time. Uh, we've created these two extra characters. Now we need to put them in this scene. So these characters need to show up, and uh, they need to make their way over here. So what we're going to do is I'm going to create a new event. Uh, this event right here, 
We're going to call this uh, Kidnapper 1. And that's going to be using Kidnapper 1 uh, Walk Image. There we go. There's Kidnapper 1. And then here, I'm going to put in right here Oh, I can't have them overlap. I'm going to move him over one. And I'm going to put in a new... This is Kidnapper 2. So Kidnapper 2 uses Kidnapper 2's walk. There we go. Apply. Okay. So we have Kidnapper 1 and Kidnapper 2, and they're outside Grug's house. And I want to do uh, Kidnapper 1, I want to have him be same as a character. That's fine, I don't have to touch any of that. Most of these we don't have to worry about right now, because this is just to get these characters on screen. Okay. Now... What we need to do is I want to have character 1 and character 2 looking at each other. So this is where we're going to use this outside space. I'm going to make a new event at the very top. And I'm going to call this intro 1. So, what is intro 1 going to do? Well, the first thing that's going to happen in intro 1 is we're going to have the screen fade in. Okay? Okay. So we're going to have the screen fade in. Next up is we are going to have um, set movement route. We are going to, uh, where do I want to put him here? I want kidnapper one who's on the right to turn left. Okay, and I want Kidnapper 2, who is on the left, to make sure he's turning right. All right, so Kidnapper 1 is going to be looking to the left. He's going to look left, and he's going to look right. And I want Kidnapper 1 to say... We're going to use his face, Kidnapper 1's face, and we're going to use his kind of default expression here. Like that. What's Kidnapper 1's name? We need to come up with this. Kidnapper 1 is Carl, and Kidnapper 2 is Eddie. Those are two good names. Ed. I like Ed a lot better than Eddie. So we got Carl and Ed. So Carl's going to say, Come on, Ed. Let's get this done with. So we can get to the... Uh, what's the dialogue here? Come on, Ed. Let's get this done with. So we can get to the slave market. And cash... Cash in. And we can actually preview this window. So this is going to show up, and it's going to be his face. He's going to say, come on, Ed, let's get this done with so we can get to the slave market and cash in. And we could put, you know, we could put a name in front of this if we wanted to so people knew who was talking, but they'll get the idea, I think, eventually, quick, pretty quickly. If he says, come on, Ed, and the other guy says, shut up, Carl. Uh, so that looks good. We can also set the background if we want it to be transparent or if we want a window. I like the window look to it. And we can set it to the bottom, middle, or top of the screen. Uh, let's put this at the top of the screen, since the characters are at the bottom. That way they won't be obscured at all. So that's going to pop up, and that's going to be the first thing. And then I want some more text. And this time we're going to have Kidnapper 2. I don't know why I did that twice, but okay. 
Um, Kidnapper 2 is going to say... Uh, he's going to use this this smiley face. He's going to say... I'm with you, Carl. I can't wait to get back... To get back where the booze is cold. And the ladies are hot. Because that's the kind of guy a slaver would be. He'd be a jerk like that, right? Like, that sounds like a corny piece of action dialogue, I would expect. Uh, let's preview that, make sure that's not cut off. Yeah, I'm with you, Carl. I can't wait to get back where the booze is cold and the ladies are hot. Oh, the dialogue's going to be amazing. All right, so after those two pieces of dialogue walk in, um, we're going to have these two guys walk up to the door. So character one needs to move over one, two spaces. Uh, one, yeah, two spaces to the right. So we need to... Oh, it's a little off screen there. Sorry, folks. We need to add in this. And this event, we are going to set a movement route for kidnapper one. He is going to turn to the right. And then he is going to move right one, two spaces, and then he is going to turn left. Oh, I'm sorry, turn up. So he's going to walk over and he's going to look up. And then, one second later, the other guy is going to follow him. I don't want them to bump into each other. Oh, I think we'll be okay. I don't think they'll bump into each other. We'll test it here in a moment. So I want him to do that and turn up. And then... We're also going to set a movement route for Kidnapper 2, who is already going to be looking to the right, so he just needs to move one, two spaces. So he just needs to move right and move right. Okay, apply. We're going to set this to auto run, so that way this scene runs automatically when everything starts. And again, we'll be coming back to this. We're going to have a lot of editing to do on this, so let's see how that plays out. Uh... Save our game. Woo! All right. So let's go ahead and see how our beginning of our cutscene works. So we hit new game. And there we get our text. Now, you can see already the problem. We're not focused on the characters. Okay, they moved okay. I can see that at the bottom of the screen. All right, so... Next, we need to move Grug, because we need this to be focused. So, Grug is going to, instead of being where he's at, I'm going to put him right here. Uh, we're going to set this as the player position. And we're going to do something else with the player here. We are going to make Grug invisible. So, we're going to edit. And right in the beginning, we're going to add a new section. And for the player... Uh, we're going to, uh, is it under player? Yeah, it's here, under character. Change transparency. We're going to turn on transparency. So, or actually what we can do, no, that'll work. So now Grug should be here, but he should be invisible, so we won't see him at all. I also want to change this, uh, edit. I want to move this to the top of the screen as well. Or actually, we'll do the middle of the screen. Let's see if that works. So it looks like one guy's talking, then the other guy's talking. So we'll save our progress. We should be saving more often. I keep forgetting to hit save. Make sure you hit save. So let's see how this plays out. So our game will start, and these two look at each other. And the one guy goes, come on, Ed, let's get this done with so we can get to the slave market and cash in. And Ed's like, I'm with you, Carl. I can't wait to get back where the booze is cold and the ladies are hot. And then they walk over to the door and boom. Now what happens is, because this is a, a programming language, it's going to loop right back because we didn't tell it to stop. So this is going to play out over and over again until we tell it to stop. So you can see that... That's just going to happen over and over. So, that's okay. We're going to stop here, and we're going to jump in. How far are we into this episode? 24. 
I think I'm going to try to keep this episode, the first part here, to maybe a half hour, 45 minutes. We'll see how long we go to get this first part done. So they walk over, and after they stop at the door, I want uh, Kidnapper 1 to say something. So, uh, new, show text, Kidnapper 1. Oh, there we go. There's the shush mouth. And this is why we did the different expressions. So, shh. I can hear them moving around. If we are quick, we might catch them off guard. I don't want a knife in my belly. And again, we'll put this at the top. And again, while I'm checking here, I want to make sure that we don't have anything uh, that's too big for our text window. All right, so hit OK. And then Kidnapper... Uh, kidnapper 2 here. Show text. Kidnapper 2 is going to be angry right there. I know how to bag a kid. Kid Carl. I don't need instructions from you. On how to do my job. Okay. And again, we'll do that middle. And then we'll have one more here where we'll have Carl go into his sad face, his grumpy face. All right. Yeah, it's kind of like upset face. We'll say, okay. On the count of three, one, two, and then what's going to happen is I'm going to have him yell three when he comes through the door. So that's the plan. So we're going to hit, uh, how can we do this? I don't think this will move the map. If I do him, top, okay, and then if I do a new, this is going to be the hard part, if I transfer player to here, okay, okay, apply, okay, I don't know if that will activate the door or not, so let's find out, yes, save the changes. I don't know if it'll move the camera. That's what I'm wondering about. So we start our game. Come on in. Let's get this done with so we can get to the slave market and cash in. I'm with you, Carl. I can't wait to get back where the booze is cold and the ladies are hot. Shh. I can hear them moving around if we are quick. If we are quick. Do I want to do a we're or we are? If we are quick, we might catch them off guard. I don't want a knife in my belly. I know how to bag a kid, Carl. I don't need instructions from you on how to do my job. Okay, on the count of three. One, two. No, it did not initiate the transfer. So, we're not going to get the animation, which is fine. I, I, I was hoping we could do that animation, but there's no way to do it. So, the last little step is we won't move the player. We'll get rid of this. Well, actually, because what we're going to do is we're going to delete this. And we're going to transfer the player here. Transfer player from here to here. And we're going to put the player 
Uh, somewhere I don't want him to get bumped into. We'll just have to remember he's here in this corner because they're not going to run up here. So we'll put the player here. We'll hit OK. Do we want to fade or do we want it to just none? Just switch right over to it. Yeah, that's what I like. And actually, if we put Grug all the way up there, it may not all fit on the screen, so we're just going to have to put Grug somewhere we know where he's at. Grug is on this chair, so no one can walk on this chair. Alright, so let's give this a shot. Let's see how we did. So, come on, Ed, let's get this done with. We have our little bit of dialogue. The two walk over. And I guess we could move them like in a chain. I don't know what you would do if you had a bunch of people you wanted to move together. All right. One, two. And then we're going to have them bust into the door. Grug is still invisible, of course. But we're going to have them bust through the door here. And uh, that will come to the point where they're going to see find Mom and the kid. So next episode, we need to make Mom and the kid. Uh, we need to make all their stuff like we did for these two. And then we need to set all the events in here. We'll be able to use this dead space up here to create the event. And that event will... Uh, that'll that'll set it up so we can do the, the thing here. Now, here's a problem. Every time Grug walks into this door, every time he enters this screen right now, it's going to want to run this, this script that we have set up. And, of course, Grug is standing right here, so it screws the whole thing up. So we don't want this to run every single time we walk out here. So the very last step we're going to do is we're going to set a switch. So this last point, we are going to uh, flow control. Is this it? Label common event. Nope, that's not it. Ah. Control self switch. So we're going to set self switch to A, operation on. Okay. Now, we're going to make a new event page and we're going to set this to self switch A and hit apply. So what this means is that once this event happens, this event will set a switch to switch A on. So the next time this screen is loaded, the switch will be on A, which means it'll load the map without any of the scripts or uh, events. Now the problem is, I think, Ah, what's going to happen, though, is that these two guys are still going to be hanging out here. So this technique is not going to work for this. It would if we were doing something that, you know, was out of the way, or I guess we didn't have a character here. But if we do this, these two guys will just be standing here. Maybe if we wanted two people to have a conversation when you first walked into a, a room, or when you first walked into... Uh, a, a town and some guy said hello you're a new face in town and then from then on he didn't say that anymore that would work but it's not going to work here because if we play so this all happens we're already ready for all this they're going to jump in. So if Grug runs out here, the script doesn't run, but I still have these two dudes chilling out here. So, what do we do to get rid of that? Uh, ah, I wonder. Is there a conditional switch that we can put in to delete another uh, event? Uh, let me see here. Ah, set movement route.
change image, change capacity. Ah, I know what we can do. Uh, I don't want to move a route. I want to just move an event. Set event location. We can move kidnapper1. Yeah. So we will change an event transparency. So let's see here. On movement route, we will set kidnapper1 to be transparent. And we will set kidnapper2. Oh, kidnapper1. Transparent, okay, apply. All right. And then we're going to do another new one. And we're going to set Kidnapper 2 as Transparent. Okay, apply. And then, oh, we need to scroll down here. We're going to move Kidnapper 1. He is going to move to this bottom corner. Okay, apply. And then we're going to move Kidnapper 2 to also the other the bottom corner next to him, so right there. Okay. Apply. Okay. Let's see if that worked. Again, having that little black space gives us room to work with. All right, let's see what happens. So we have our dialog. All right. Still have this going on. And they pop in. Now Grug, if he walks out, they're still there. So why? Ah, because this didn't play again. All right. So what we actually need to do, because this doesn't set anything, this uh, delete. We need to go to here, and we need to now. Uh, we need to make them. Uh, Invisible for kidnapper one. Okay. Invisibility for kidnapper two. Now we need to move them like we talked about a moment ago. Kidnapper one, bottom right corner. All right. And kidnapper two, bottom right corner. Okay, apply. Okay, let's try this again. So, this plays out. And it's good to learn all this now because it'll make it easier later on. So here we have the dialogue happens. They talk to each other. They walk into the house for the part that we haven't seen yet. And then if we leave, they should be gone. Nope, something's wrong. Something is wrong. I'm going to have to find out what is happening that is wrong because I don't know why this is not switching a on which should be setting the event to this so that's what I'm going to look up next folks I will find that out oh. I will find that out in the next episode of gaming with grug We'll finish this section up. I have another workaround, which is to copy the map, which we can always do as well, um, which might be easier. And uh, we'll figure all that out 
on the next episode. So I'm going to say thanks for watching this episode. We've at least figured out some basics for how to set up our cutscene, and we know what we're doing next. So thanks for watching. Please tell your friends, and as always, we hope to see you soon.